Hello, and welcome to this video where I will, I will walk you through a prototype that I've built as part of a demonstration paper for the SSN workshop entitled Integrating Building Information Modeling and Sense Observations Using Semantic Web. Um, I have put a link down below for, for the paper so you can go and read it yourself. But what I'm basically showing is that is how we can integrate um, data sets described using uh, the W3C link building data community group ontologies uh, for properties and products and building topology uh, property management along with the SSN and SOSA for describing sensor observations. Um, in the application here you can see I have this show info button uh, which will allow us to see all the Sparkle queries being sent to the server in the background. Um, and what you can see is that here I have the first query being asked. That's that's a query to to populate this um, this uh, drop down list with spaces. Basically, I'm asking for anything that is of type bot story in the building topology ontology terminology, um, and then I'm asking for the name of it, the props identity data name, but not just the name. I'm asking for the property state of it which is classified as the current property state, which will, which means the latest name. Uh, OPM is to be used in the design stages where properties change quite rapidly. Um, and by asking for the current property state, I'm asking for the latest state of that property. So the name that was most recently used by the architect to describe this space. Um, I'm also restricting my results so that this story must have a space which must also have a space boundary defined. And you see I get 10 results here in a format like this, uh, which you can also see when I click the, the drop down here. The next thing going on is that when a level is selected, then we do a query for that specific level and ask for the spaces contained in that level. Again, we're asking for the names, and now we're actually returning the geometry. Um, I'm not outputting the P here, but what you will see is that the geometry is described using well-known text, polygons. Um, and basically I get something like X, Y coordinate, X, Y coordinate, etc. cetera. Um, and here we have 26 results for this very level. What I also get is the maximum temperature. It's quite slow to do it this way. And probably this should be done on the server rather than, than me doing it here on, on runtime. But um, this is just a simple demonstration of how we can do a query to ask for the maximum temperature or the maximum value of the temperatures measured by all the sensors on this story. I'll just walk you through it. So, so again, we have the story here. It has a space which we store in, in variable URI. This space must contain an element which we store in variable temperature sensor. And this sensor must be of type dark temperature sensor. This is described using the dark ont ontology. Um, then we are asking for any observation which is saucer made by this sensor or uh, has the property actuation made by. So actually, we would also here be returning uh, actuators, not only sensors. Uh, actuations made by actuators and we're storing it in the variable temp center um, then we're getting the result and the timestamp uh, but here only getting the maximum of the value as um, as the maximum value what is then happening is that um, d3 is used to convert these um, these um, temperature spans to a color scale and, and we're coloring uh, the, the spaces containing sensors here. Uh, I'll just show you that we can go to a level that's a bit more interesting, maybe this one here. And you can see the, the query asking for the maximum temperatures is a bit slow. Here it takes something like 3.3 seconds uh, to return the 20 uh, sensor results from this story. Um, and if I go to something maybe like this, let's see how long that will take. Something like 5.5 seconds. So it's, so it's quite slow. 
Um, the building you see here is called Navitas. It's the University of Aarhus. Uh, so it's a university building in Aarhus, Denmark. Um, we also have support for 3D. Um, and that's included in the terminology of, of the building topology ontology now. So you see, basically, I ask again for this very level story and the spaces contained in that story. And then I'm asking for the name and also asking for the simple 3D model. And here, the geometry is basically described as um, OBJ. So you see we have X, Y, Z coordinate uh, for all the vertices, then we have the vertices normals, and then we have the surfaces. Um, when you click any space, um, you will see this pop up uh, where the first query we're asking is for all the sensors contained in a space. So I'm binding to a constant here as the, the very space that we're looking at. And then I'm looking at URIs for things that are contained in this space. Um, then I'm getting the identifier, uh, which is what I'm using here to, to, uh, to give to the users. And then we're looking for all the observations made by this sensor. So there, might, there, needs, there, there needs to be observations made by this sensor, or else we won't uh, populate the list with that one. Uh, then we get all the sensor observations here. So we are asking for We're binding the very sensor that we chose in the other in the drop down here as the sensor, and then we're asking for all the observations made by that sensor, and we're returning the time and the value, um, and that we're putting in this um, in this chart here. It it supports bar charts or or line charts, but this is not really what's what's interesting. What's interesting is is how we achieve the the data from the sensor and how this is modeled. And I hope that this video has given you a good overview of of how this works. Thanks.